All right, so let's not beat around the bush. I finally finished all the documentation for this build. Now that includes a full parts list with links to every single component down to the smallest screw, the CAD model in multiple formats, and a 62 page build guide. And not only have I done that for this machine here, but I've also designed a smaller desktop size version. So to avoid confusion, this larger machine is called the Y1200, and that smaller one is called the Y400. Now all of those are available right now over on my website for just a few dollars, and that's to help me with things like website fees and keeping this resource maintained and updated for everyone to enjoy. So I'll put links to all of that down below, but I really do hope you find that information valuable. Now with that said, let's get on with the build. Last time we finished up all the big ticket items, but we still have a number of things to button up. As much as I love the rustic charm of holding the lid up with a stick, let's try and improve this situation. So what I have here is a pair of 150 Newton gas lift struts. I ordered these before the lid was complete, so I had to guess at the weight. And I'll tell you, when they showed up, I was like, oh no, they're way too small. Until I tried pushing on them. Yeah. So let's have a look at how we can mount them. So the top mount looks like it can just fit straight on, which is nice for once. But the bottom here needs to sit below, so maybe a little right angle bracket or something. So what I'm going to do is use two 2020 corner brackets next to each other. And mount it on like this. Then I can put the top one on. And if you're wondering where those little marks came from, well, that's because I've actually spent the last hour taking these on and off trying to find the best place. Ah, the magic of television. <laughs> So those measurements are 375 millimeters and 155 millimeters. Uh, this is also in the build guide, by the way. All right, so I'll quickly put the mounts on the other side and then I can pop the struts on. And I'm not sure if I'm an expert at guessing things or whether there's a bit of wiggle room for getting the correct strut force, but they seem to be doing the job. I mean, it's not quite one finger operation, but that was always asking a bit much. But I'm going to call these struts done. Okay, so now onto the powered Z-axis. Now this isn't necessary, but it's a cool little feature. So I've got a NEMA 23 stepper motor, a timing pulley, a mounting plate, and some M5 nuts and bolts. I only had button head bolts left, which is, they didn't fit against the motor housing properly, which is why I had to mount them backwards and use the pliers. <clears throat> anyway, in the, in the parts list, I've included the correct socket head bolts for this, uh, so you can just use a spanner like you meant to. I want this to sit where I can easily access it, but also where the motor won't get in the way and stop the bed from going all the way down. So I'm going to use an offcut of 2020 to make a riser, and then I can mount it to the frame. Now obviously we need some way to keep tension on the belt, so I did a bit of catting and came up with this. I need a little bit more belt to work with, so I'm just going to scooch the lead screw over a tad. Then I can set the tension on the belt by sliding the tensioner into place. Now to wire it up, I've got myself another stepper driver and I'll plug the wires from the stepper motor in, the 24 volts from the power supply, 
and then the signal from the driver to the z-axis output on the control board. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to win any races, but I'm happy with that. All right, moving on. So here is a classic case of not paying attention when ordering things online. This is a 20 by 10 millimeter cable chain or drag chain. It's nice and lightweight and good for holding a few small cables. This is what I accidentally ordered, 25 by 18 millimeter cable chain. I mean, it's fine. I'll use it on the Y axis, but it is a bit heavy duty. But on the flip side, it can do this. So I'll start by preparing the chain to mount onto the end of the x-axis gantry. Which can then just slide straight into the T-slot. To get the length right, I'll move the gantry to the far end. I could just end the chain here, but seeing as I've got plenty, I might as well bring it right back to the other end. Now cable chains have a minimum radius that they like to move at, but that would put us directly in the path of the extraction blast gates. So I'm going to place it a little bit lower so it sits below those openings. I'll use a 2028 corner connector as the mounting point, but I'll also need to file down the little tabs off them so that the chain can sit flat. And I'll place a couple more on the other uprights as well. onto the chain for the x-axis. There's a nice cozy little spot for it behind the rail and then that just mounts up onto the carriage plate. To mount the far end of the chain onto the rail I'll need a couple of flat brackets. I'm using rotating T-nuts to mount them to the underside of the rail and M3 screws to hold the chain down. I'll mark the location for the other end on the X-axis carriage plate and very carefully drill out some 2.5mm holes so I can run an M3 tap in. Now onto running the airline for the air assist nozzle. So let's just undo the chain we just did and feed the tube through. The tube goes into the quick connect and then a zip tie for strain relief. And it's the same exact story for the Y axis. To connect them up, I'll just use another 90 degree quick connect. Oh. 
The other end can go off to the air compressor, like we talked about back in episode 5. Speaking of air, let me show you my new extractor. Now just for reference, this is what I started with. The little bathroom fan that comes with a K40 type laser cutter. Now even in its prime, it moved about as much air as an asthmatic mouse. Despite that, I got a good few years of use out of it by using computer fans to just ram air down its throat. Now this obviously isn't going to work for the new laser cutter because the enclosure is just too big. So this is what I've purchased instead. Which I'm hoping will be a big improvement. This is a one horsepower blower designed for workshop extraction and I intend to use it for double duties with some of my other tools as well. In the upcoming projects we'll be able to put this through its paces and see whether or not it was worth the extra money. Okay, so the final thing I wanted to talk about today is the cutting table for the laser cutter. Now I haven't addressed this in the build guide just because there are so many possible options. If you're not familiar with cutting tables, I'm just referring to the thing that supports the material or workpiece while it's being cut or engraved. It needs to be made of something durable, typically aluminium or steel, and have a very thin edge so the laser beam doesn't really hit it and smoke doesn't build up underneath it. The most common would be honeycomb beds and knife tables, both of which are great options, and if you can get them at a reasonable price, I'd say just go with one of those. Now the downside is, and I'm speaking from someone living far away in New Zealand, shipping can get expensive because they're kind of bulky. So the best DIY option I've found is making some pin boards. Now I've tried everything from commercial honeycomb beds to oven trays, and let me tell you, these have the cleanest cuts out of any of them. Because the material is only supported by the tiniest point, you get virtually no marks or residue on the underside. So while I wholeheartedly recommend a set of these, I also want to try build some new ones which look a bit more uh, professional. So I've got some U-channel aluminium and some aluminium rivets, and I need to dull down the top surface of the aluminium by sanding it, so this is to help scatter and diffuse the beam when it hits it, so it doesn't kind of reflect straight back up into the material and burn the underside. I'll drill a bunch of holes so I can seat the rivets into it. If you guys have your own DIY cutting table ideas, drop them down in the comments because I'm sure we'd love to hear them. Using the T-slots and the bed platform, I can slide it around and bolt it into place as I need to. I reckon I'll probably need about 7 more of these, but that'll have to wait as I'm running really short on time this week because of all that extra work in releasing the documentation. Ah, I really wanted to get everything finished up this episode, but it's going to have to roll on to next episode because I have to race now to get all of this edited in time for the weekend. So as always, you can find me on Instagram or down in the comments, but I will catch you on the next one.